Good, and I will be your host for this evening. Of course, you know, we have two hours of uninterrupted talk radio. That's on the mark, straight talk across the Narrows. And it's so good to be here with you on this day, the 14th of December. And uh, we are just out of the election campaign and the election season here on the island of Nevis. And I guess um, you could say that we're now going into the Christmas season proper, although we have already had some Christmas tree lightings and, and so on going on. But um, things are looking up here in Nevis. Of course, we would all know that the Concerned Citizens Movement has been returned as the government here on the island of Nevis and uh, for that I think we must say to God be the glory and uh, so I guess we'll talk a little bit uh, more about that on the top of the show though I want to welcome in all of our listeners who are listening on Fun Radio um, who always join us on a Wednesday evening we, we really appreciate um, you and that's that's very very good that you decide to use your Wednesday night to listen to the on the mark show of course now you cannot just listen to us now because we are also on YouTube and Facebook as the young people will say the show is up to the times now <laughs> so we are on YouTube and we're on Facebook of course if you want to follow us on YouTube you go into YouTube and you type in Vaughn Radio and you look for the Vaughn Radio YouTube page you like the page and you will get indications when they have a live stream happening and of course also on Facebook you go onto Facebook and you like the Vaughn Radio page and of course there's also the option for a notification whenever Vaughn Radio goes live so every Wednesday when we do the on the mark show you certainly get that notification and you can join us via Facebook it's so good to be here this evening and I want to welcome in everybody wherever you are listening um, out there in the diaspora if you are um, listening in England or anywhere around Europe for those who are in Taiwan and so on who, who it's the early morning we're so happy that you decided to to join us and of course back here in the western hemisphere from as far north as canada and um you know places all over the united states in the u.s and british virgin islands in saint martin um in puerto rico in um the dominican republic in haiti wherever you're listening um to the south of us in Guyana and Trinidad and Grenada and Barbados, Dominica, St. Lucia. Um, we want to welcome all of you who listen. And of course, here in the Federation of St. Kitts and Nevis, um, we want to say a special welcome to all of you who tune in every Wednesday to On the Mark. You make the show what it is. And those of you who call in, I'm expecting to get a lot of calls tonight because I guess we're going to do a little post-mortem on the um, elections and we're going to talk a little bit about the election of course um, also at the top of the show we like to take the opportunity to um, express condolences with any of those families who would have suffered loss over the past week or also or just a little bit over a week we often like to share our sympathies with with you and tonight is no different and i want to um send out sympathies to the family of eltruda glassford originally of um Barnsgut, i think uh, but who resided there in Craddock Road. so i want to um, send out condolences to the entire um family and of course for those persons who are celebrating birthdays I um, want to send out birth well, not just birthdays but birthdays anniversaries um, whatever the occasion is for being happy um, I think I could send out a greeting to the CCM party too and the CCM party faithful because we have we certainly have cause to be 
um, celebrating because we, we've just gotten that renewed mandate so I could put that in in there but certainly the birthdays we send out a happy birthday to my nephew um, T. John Lybert who celebrated um, this week he he has turned 18 and I think the law says that um, when you turn 18 that you're on your way to being an adult I don't want to say that you're an adult yet because you don't just pop up and become an adult in in one day but you get some liberties under the law once you turn 18 so um, special happy birthday um, to you to John from here on Van Radio you know sometimes people don't like when when you send out a happy birthday to them on on the radio you know but the world is changing everybody's using social media now it used to be in the past that the birthday greetings on the radio was probably the only way to get it out there into the media but nowadays um, you go on Facebook you have somebody as a friend and first thing in the morning you see that notification pop up to say that it's their birthday on a particular day I think it has its good about it you know um, you get to remember more birthdays and so on and, and they become more meaningful because you get that notification in the morning and you get to send a message or, or call or something like that so it's good to have um, these apps that keep track of things like birthdays and so on so um, you know all those who are celebrating we want to certainly celebrate with you ladies and gentlemen it's now what seven minutes after the, the um, eight o'clock hour and uh, so you know we want to get into the show <laughs> quickly and as i said at the top of the show we're just coming out of elections today is the 14th of december when 14th of december and of course you know that on monday the 12th of december um all of nevis paused because we had um elections for the nevis island um assembly and uh we have five seats in nevis there were five seats up for grabs um we had the two main parties on, on nevis contesting seats in all five areas and then i think we had a third party that contested seats in two areas of course the concerned citizens movement would have won the majority of seats um, we won three out of five seats and the NRP um, would have returned two seats out of um, five seats this means uh, a slightly diminished um, mandate for the concerned citizens movement but a mandate to govern um, nevertheless so the concerned citizens movement um, we fielded candidates in all five of the districts here on Nevis. In Nevis 1, our candidate was the Honorable Spencer Brand, who was the incumbent um, representative for Charlestown, and he has been returned as the representative for Charlestown. In Nevis 2, of course, we feel that the leader of our party, um, Dr. the Honorable Mark Brantley, the Premier of Nevis, um, and he was returned again as the the um, winner of that contest. Um, he would have come up against Dr. Patricia Bartlett, who um, had a good showing, of course. And uh, you know, um, we we of course have to recognize people when they do okay. So yeah, that was a a good enough um, showing by the opposition candidate. Um, of course, in Nevis 3, we have the the CCM would have fielded um, the Honorable Eric Evelyn, who was the incumbent, and um, the Honorable Eric Evelyn was returned as the the incumbent for the next five years with a, a landslide victory in um, Gingerland. Of course, we know that Gingerland has over the years been um, very good to the concerned citizens movement and so um, Eric Evelyn was returned with a massive victory in Gingerland. Um, in Nevis 4 the CCM would have um, 
had our candidate and he would have been the person, the deputy um, leader of the CCM and he would have been the incumbent um, in that race uh, coming up against the new leader of the Nevis Reformation Party, um, Dr. Janice um, Daniel Hodge. And um, unfortunately for, for us, um, a bit surprising, I must say, to me, um, Alexis would have fallen short by, um, I think it was eight votes, a very razor-thin um, margin. And so, you know, I'd like to take the opportunity, of course, to congratulate um, Dr. Daniel Hodge on being um, returned as the victor in that race and um, as the representative now for the parish of St. James. And in Nevis 5, in St. Thomas's, our candidate and uh, our new candidate, she was the only candidate who we field and who was a new candidate in um, Latoya Jones, she would have been a challenger um, coming up against the NRP incumbent in um, Cleone Stapleton Simmons and uh, um, Cleone Stapleton Simmons would have been um, re-elected again. She was the incumbent and she was um, re-elected um, <coughs> in St. Thomas's and of course we know that St. Thomas's over the years um, has been very loyal and has returned um, the NRP candidate in you know every election certainly since we've had independence but um, I think for us in the Concerned Citizens Movement we could take some solace because our candidate did um, remarkably well, very well um, we were able to gain over 500 votes for the first time in any uh, local election in St. Thomas's, in in fact, I think before that we had never cracked 300 in a in a local election, and so it's probably a sign of things to come in the in the future. But um, certainly, want to congratulate all of the winners, and of course, you know, we also want to register our thanks certainly the the concerned citizen movement i also um wear the hat as the chairman of the um ccm party and so uh i'd like to of course on behalf of our party thank all of those voters who went out and exercised their their franchise i mean the democratic process gives us the opportunity as um, citizens and residents to once we are eligible to vote and we are registered to go out and to um, exercise our franchise and so I want to um, thank all those who went out to vote and to exercise that franchise you know for for doing that for taking part in the democratic process and of course I want to send out a special thanks to those persons who went out and supported the candidates of the concerned citizens movement we really really appreciate um, your vote of confidence in the concerned citizens movement and of course elections are not easy elections are very um, <coughs> difficult things a lot of work goes into election a lot of time goes into elections a lot of effort goes into elections and so um, I'd also like to take the opportunity on behalf of the party to thank all of those who came out to to work on behalf of the concerned citizens movement um, you know we had people doing various things we had persons being poll watchers and so on persons who came out to the meetings at night persons who helped us with the logistics for the meetings and so on and we want to thank everybody who contributed to the campaign in any way and anybody who um, assisted or helped the, the party in any way we certainly appreciate your your effort your effort certainly has not gone unnoticed and um, 
we are where we are today because we have so many people who come out and give of their time you know to support the party because I think people realize that um, the CCM is a party that is for Nevis. We are a party that looks out for the people of Nevis. We are a party that we could we, we could say that we are pro Nevis. We we believe that the people of Nevis are very very important and that the people um, should always matter most. And certainly, we really really value your contribution um i have with me here in the studio this evening um one of the ccm's successful candidates and i think he is um um, getting very good at um you know navigating what what we would call close quarters he's a he's a very good um driver and he's able to to navigate in 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 very very close quarters and he did that again in this election he would have done the same thing in um 2017 he 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 was our candidate for charleston in 2013 at that time he he was not successful but he is somebody who has a heart for service um i have worked with him for a while now and you know um in terms of and an indiv- as an individual, you know, somebody who is easy to get along with and a real good guy. You know, sometimes you meet people and you say, you know, that's a good person. Um, this this person is certainly a, a good person, personable, easy to talk to, and so on, and quiet. But he gets he gets work done. And once he is set that you know he wants to get this done for the people, he goes out and he is relentless in in getting that work done the, the thing about it though charlestown as we know before was um you know fertile ground for the nrp so um our candidate would have come along would have wrestled that seat away and brought it over on onto the ccm side and um this year again it, it turned out to be a little closer than i thought it would have um been but considering the circumstances you know we are very very happy and pleased with the result and i just want to say to god be the glory and i want to say good night to the honorable spencer brand the representative for nevis one charlestown i feel very good saying that sir and i want to welcome you to to on the mark uh, good evening, uh, Troy, and a very pleasant good evening to the listeners and viewers of uh, edition of On The Map. Uh, thank you for the invitation, Troy, to come and spend a few minutes with you. Of course, my voice is still not 100%, so um, we agreed on 15, 20 minutes. <laughs> um, I'm still, I still trying to make sure I protect the voice, but I, I thought it was important for me to come and, and to say thank you. But before I do that, I want to like you offer my condolences to uh, the family of El Truda Glassford um, who resided there in the Quarter Code area. I believe that uh, as a community we recognize that there are those who come and make their contribution in in various ways. Um, Some do it without much (coughs) pomp and um, circumstance and I certainly want to say to the family of uh, El Truda Glassford how thankful we are for the contribution and we certainly hope and pray that you know in this very difficult time that God would give them some comfort so I want to like you offer my condolences I also try want to use this opportunity to wish a very special lady happy belated birthday um, the wonderful person of Miss Lucina Do Mamalo who celebrated her 94th birthday. That's right. Her 94th birthday on Monday. And uh, I want to take this opportunity to say happy belated birthday to uh, Mamalo, Lucina Duo. Um, you know, but uh, I, I have a different name for her, her middle name. I normally call her Mary. And uh, we often have a good laugh about it. So I want to say a very pleasant good evening to, to Mamalo. 
for celebrating her 94th birthday on Monday. And those of us in the Charlestown area would know that Mamelo has been one of those persons who has been someone who was a tower of strength in the Charlestown area and certainly in, 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 in my church really one of those persons who have been a really good example for us the uh, the St. Paul's Anglican Church. So I want to say to Mamelo, good evening, happy belated birthday and I hope that you will bat on and bat on until we reach 104. Troy, um, you are correct, we are now um, out of the election period and the people of Nevis would have gone to the polls on Monday, uh, December 12th and they would have made their choice. Um, in Charlestown, they would have uh, given me a, a second mandate, a renewed mandate. In St. John's, they would have given the Premier a, a, a renewed mandate. In Gingerland, they would have uh, chosen uh, once again uh, Eric Evelyn as their representative. In Nevis number four, um, we would have seen that uh, our, our colleague, the Honorable Alexis Jeffers, uh, would have, you know, lost that seat by some eight votes. And I certainly want to, like you, uh, offer my congratulations to the NRP candidate there in Nevis number four, Dr. Dennis Daniel Hodge. And uh, offer my uh, commensuration certainly to our colleague, the Honorable um, Alexis Jeffers. In Nevis number five, um, as you indicated as well, um, a seat that the NRP has held for many, many years. Um, our our candidate in the person of Miss Jones did not um, succeed, but I think that she did a reasonably good showing there in St. Thomas's, and we are certainly hoping for uh, bigger and better things from her. I also want to congratulate uh, uh, Miss Cleon Stapleton Simmons for retaining that seat. I believe that the people of Nevis um, went out on Monday and I, I, I felt that the, the percentage in terms of the voter turnout, um, you know, it was what, 50, 50, about 55? I, I didn't go through all the figures. So. Mid 50s, late 50s, and I compared to what we saw in the federal election, which was around 42, 43%. I think that we saw a 10, 12% increase in the voter turnout for this election. And I want to say to our people that while at times we may have some uh, concerns about governance and we feel that our party should be uh, at the helm of government, I want to encourage our people to participate in the process. It doesn't make much sense to um, criticize and stand on the sideline and don't participate in the process when they are offered that opportunity to do so. So I would hope that going forward, um, we would expect that our people, more of our people would participate in the process. And I think that that would give all of us that voice um, once the, the elections are over. Um, but I, I, I thought I would come here tonight, Troy, as you would have given an invitation for me to come, you know, and to say thanks. I want to thank certainly our Premier for his leadership um, throughout the campaign and, and certainly as the head of government and the head of this party. I believe he continued to be an inspiration for us. Um, you know, Troy, as I do, that we may be giving 100%, but he continues to ask us to give 110%. Mm -hmm. And we certainly expect no difference in the new dispensation. So I really want to thank our party leader and the Premier, who was sworn in today as the mm -hmm. next Premier. I certainly want to say congratulations to him as he uh, mm -hmm. gave and, and, s uh, and he was sworn in today again as, as our Premier. I certainly want to offer him my congratulations. I certainly want to offer him my um, continued support and commitment to the people of Nevis. I, I believe that uh, the team that would have um, throughout this entire campaign, there's a lot of moving parts in this campaign and this is um, probably my fifth campaign, 2013, 2017, 2020. 
2022 and now 2022 again. So I've been around a few campaigns, mm -hmm. and I think that there is really a, a huge mechanism behind the candidates during any campaign. And I, I really want to say how thankful and how grateful we are for the kind of heavy lifting that they continue to do. I think that they are some of our people who are um, not necessarily often gi be given the kind of prominence that um, we as candidates are basically the face of the end product, really. Mm -hmm. But behind us, there is a, is, a, is a massive, massive force. I really want to say to them how thankful we are and how grateful we are for their continued dedication and commitment um, leading up to the campaign, during the campaign, and uh, on election day. We have had many persons who worked tirelessly on election day. And um, I believe that our victory and maintaining the government, um, even though we are uh, um, with a reduced mandate, I believe that this victory, even though we as individuals are victors, that this victory is as much as their victory. And I want to say to them how grateful we are for their support and their commitment. And I certainly want to congratulate them as well. Uh, I believe that going forward, um, Troy, um, mm -hmm. we have outlined a very ambitious agenda um, for the next five years. And I am very confident that we will be able to accomplish those high um, ideals that we have set for the people of Nevis. Uh, it means that we would have to stay focused, you know, stay resolute, stay positive. Um, despite a lot of the, the distraction that keep coming, I, 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 I think that once we continue to stay resolute and stay focused, we will get much accomplished for the people of Nevis. So, and I, I believe that the people of Nevis also recognize that in the Concerned Citizens Movement Party, in the leadership of the Concerned Citizens Movement, that this is leadership that they can trust. It's leadership that has been tried, proven, and tested. And I believe that the people of Nevis recognize that with a CCM government, we are not saying that everything will be perfect. We are not saying that we will get everything right all of the time. But we are saying that you can rest assured that we have the best interest of the people of Nevis at heart 100%, 100% of the time. And they can rest assured on that. And our, our, our record have proven that we have always seek to the, the, the best interest of the people at, at heart, you know, Definitely. and I, I think that sometimes in our own quiet moments and we recognize that, you know, going left or going right, we always make sure that we focus on the people of Nevis, and that is our primary, our secondary, all of our um, objectives is the people of Nevis. So I want to say to the people of Nevis, thank you so much for reposing your confidence in the Concerned Citizens Movement Party again. I also want to use this opportunity to particularly thank the people of St. Paul's. Um, in 2017, I came to you and I asked you to give me a chance and I certainly will earn the rest. I believe that the, the confidence in, uh, from the people of St. Paul's in reposing their trust in me once again is a clear indication that what I've done over the past five years um, give the people of St. Paul's enough confidence to re-elect me. And I certainly want to thank them for the trust and the confidence that they have reposed in me again. I can say to the people of St. Paul's, and certainly by extension the people of Nevis, I will continue to work tirelessly for you to see um, greater um, improvement in your own circumstance. Uh, greater improvement in the island of Nevis. I think my position is very clear that when I decide to step off the stage, I, I believe that my goal is to ensure that I left Nevis better than how I met it. And that is my ultimate goal. And I want to thank the people of St. Paul's. I want to thank my entire team who would have worked so hard, and so long, um, many nights, um, strategizing and, and hitting the pavement and you know uh, the entire team for everything that they have done to make sure that we were successful once again in St. Paul's and I'm indeed thankful and I'm looking forward to 
I believe that it would be a lot more work because, <laughs> you know, we, we, we are basically, um, we would have, we would have not seen the success of Minister Jeffers and, um, well, we did not have St. Thomas's, but we was hoping that we would have had St. Thomas's as well. So it would have made work a lot easier for us. <laughs> but I believe that now we are, you know, one down, two down. We basically have to redouble our efforts and um, spread our wings uh, a bit wider to make sure that we continue to see the development of the island of Nevis. And that is the ultimate goal. That is the mission. And I am very confident that we'll be able to uh, be successful at that. So once again, I just wanted to say thanks. And I am indeed humbled by this trust. I am indeed honored once again to be uh, elected by the people of St. Paul's to be the representative. Thank you very much, um, Spencer. And, uh, you know, certainly um, we were all very elated. I think yours was the first one to be <laughs> to be um, called. It was a, a nail biter a bit closer than um, than we would have wanted. But, you know, you stood tall. And you are now master of the of the close um, <laughs> elections, <laughs> and um, uh, you know uh, I think we just need to continue to do what we're doing. Um, you would have rightfully said today that, and I did um, have an oversight because that that is what I should have started off the show with. <laughs> you know that this morning at eight forty-five, I think it was yes, eight forty-five. Uh, we all went up to government house and we witnessed the um, swearing in ceremony for the premier of Nevis, um, Dr. the Honorable Mark Bentley. And I think it was a very proud moment, certainly for me. I know for you also it was a yes, a, very a proud moment. And yeah. yeah, you know, you've, yeah. Um, to to see uh, Mark step up mm. to the you know, for the second time, yes. for a, a second term as Premier. And um, I think he has done a wonderful job over the past five years as Premier. And before that, um, when he served as Minister, I think he did a remarkable job. But um, over the past five um, years especially, when you consider the fact that we had COVID-19 to to handle. Um, you, you know, that, that five-year term from 20, the end of 2017, so you could say 2018 proper, um, coming up to 2022, it didn't really feel like five years, you know, no. because um, we saw the last two years. 2020 um, didn't feel like a year, and in 2021, we were still trying to figure out how we're going to get a lot of things um, back to normal. Sometimes when I'm talking about anything, I have to stop and say, you know, that was three years ago or something like that, because I have to say, <laughs> um, yeah, remember COVID, the COVID year, because that was the year when people were home, locked down, couldn't go anywhere. And, you know, then we had those days to to come out and, and so on. And so, um considering those difficult times those unprecedented times i think that the government would have done um really really well working with uh, through a time when the entire economy was shut down and there are some things that have not rebounded up until now the, the price of oil continues to be um very very volatile and a big player in that was COVID 19 because prior to COVID 19 oil was pretty steady on the international um, market and so we had to deal with those well not had to because we still have to deal with them the fluctuating um, oil prices and when the prices got so high that the fuel surcharge in Nevis started to become unmanageable the, the government um, listened to to people and people cried out for assistance we listened and we took the decision to take the surcharge off of the um, the private users, and we and then we cut the the surcharge for the for the businesses. And so, in effect, what the government did was to subsidize 
the cost of electricity to pretty much all end users here on Nevis. And that's, you know, that's an unprecedented thing because imagine in 2022, um, electricity being used here on Nevis is um, subsidized. Of course, we got some good news on the 9th, I think it was, on yes. the 9th of December, when the Caribbean Development Bank um, met and they approved some monies for the for the um, geothermal Gym. project. And um, I remember when that drill risk fund, I think that's what they call it, I remember when that drill risk fund was first formed sometime in 2014, I remember um, attending an energy symposium at the time and they had formed the, the drill risk fund and they I remember the guy from the um ho, uh, I think we have a caller. Let's go to the line cuz I, I the call, call of the evening. Hello. Hi, good evening. Yes, good, good evening. Good evening, good evening. Good evening. Hey, Welcome, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, hi. Good evening. This is Premier Mark Brantley. How are you? Wonderful. You're doing well. I feel really good to say that, you know. Premier <laughs> Mark Brantley. <laughs> Uh, I'm just calling in to express my quota of plan to the people of Nevis. And in my case, more specifically, the people of St. John's Nevis too. I reflect that it is since August of 2007 that the people of Nevis too have stayed and been with me. And I have been with them since then and we have a relationship of trust and understanding. And they have never forsaken me and I have never forsaken them. I understand that the election did not go quite as we had predicted it would, the CCM, but there were some unprecedented things that happened on the ground. I will not say more on that <laughs> tonight. Uh, truly unprecedented things that happened. We realized that one of the best performing ministers and certainly one whose, whose energy and commitment to his constituency is, is, is known by all we call him the hardest working minister, the Honorable Alexis Jeffers, that he would have lost his seat by a mere eight votes. But I do not believe that there's anything at all for him to be uh, ashamed of or concerned about because his DNA is on every every facet of Nevis. Every single constituency, every single parish has something that Alexis would have done. And I think that uh, it, it, it is now for him to determine what he does but certainly the future is still bright for Alexis Jeffers. In Latoya Jones, we had for the very first time a candidate for the system getting over 500 votes in St. Thomas's, a district that ordinarily they say is a safe NRP district. And certainly we know that that seed is now in place. We saw the response on the other side, so we recognize that they too understand that St. Thomas's can no longer be taken for granted. In Charlestown, I heard you say, Troy, that Spencer was close. <laughs> but you ought to remember that in 2017, Spencer won Charlestown by 11 votes. So in fact, he has more than doubled mm -hmm. the lead that he had on the last occasion. M master of the small and margin. Well, he has more than doubled. And uh, the reality is he's moving in the right direction. And so Spencer coming up. In fact, I'll be honest, I had, I had no doubt. Because once I heard what had happened at Charlestown Primary, and then I heard what had happened at the Maud Cross preparatory, pre preparatory School. I knew that once we got to the Magistrate Court and the High Court, it was all over. So when Spencer sent me the news, uh, I was quite elated that he had captured that. In relation to Eric Evil, you know, that was no contest. So we knew that what, what that would be. And then in relation to my own seat, uh, it took, as always, an intolerable length of time to be called. But on this occasion, I understand there was some difficulties with the count, some disagreements. But in any event, the disagreement, I'm told, involves some 16 ballots. And that's neither here nor there, because at the end of the day, I won that seat quite easily with 147 votes ahead. And so as I've said, and I to say, if my opponent took all 16, in fact, I could give her 100. It really wouldn't change the difference in terms of the seat. So I think that at the end of the day, we have a reduced majority, but nevertheless, when we realized what would have happened in this election, when we would have realized the amount of money that was spent by the NRP, the efforts that they would have made 
to influence this election, we are still standing. And I say that the only way that we can still be standing is through the will of the people and the grace of God. And therefore, I express thanks to our people for seeing and continuing to see that the CCM has the right leadership, the right approach to leadership, uh, leadership that they can trust and be comfortable with, leadership that they saw and tested under COVID. And here we are in 2022 in December looking forward to Christmas and our people have once again reposed their trust and confidence in us. And so I would look forward now. I think the island now needs to settle down. People need to recognize that the election is over. The people have spoken in Charlestown, they've spoken in, in Gingerland, they've spoken in St. John's. And they have said in those three parishes, those three constituencies, that the Constant Citizens Movement is their preferred choice and remains their preferred choice. And so we will now have to do the necessary. We have work to do to be sure. We have to once again say to the people of St. James that CCM is the best party for them. I think they know that. But okay. we also understand, as I said, what happened on the ground there, especially up in Functive. Again, I will not get into that on the radio. But in the fullness of time, I believe those who are involved will speak because that is the nature of things. And so I say that and, and just continue to, to, to pray for peace and security that God will spare us from any storms, any man-made calamities, and of course, anything such as that pandemic that we just endured. And that we can move on with the island now and get down to governance. I was quite humble this morning to have been sworn in for a second term as Premier. And uh, I really thank the people of St. John and thank God for giving me the fortitude to fight this battle. I think you gentlemen were in the thick of things, so I lie, but as the chair of the party, I want to thank you. I want to thank the entire team that worked hard, uh, Michael Manners, who did all the public relations and did a phenomenal job for us. Uh, I believe he is the finest that we've ever had on that job, and he really saturated all media outlets with information. Uh, the team that worked in terms of our bookings to make sure that our people who wanted to exercise their franchise are home safely and back safely. I want to thank them for taking the opportunity to come and taking time out of their busy lives overseas to come. We have always taken the position in this party that they are in a vision, just like we are in a vision. They have no less rights than we do, and they're entitled to exercise their franchise just as we are. And so we welcome them home. We're happy that they came home, and that their coming was not in vain, because at the end of the day, the island of Nevis still has a CCM government. And for that, we're truly grateful. So, gentlemen, I just wanted to call in. I regret not being there physically tonight, but I have a major budget speech to make in the morning in thinking and so I'm seeking to work on that so that at least tomorrow it will be coherent <laughs> difficult to go because we recognize that we would have had a few uh, you know some days uh, long long nights long days long yeah, nights. you know I'm, I'm wondering how you you do it because uh, we've been we've been pretty much working on the the same at the same pace um, I would think you more than, than I would because you're a candidate and I've been so tired yes. <laughs> since basically since after Monday after 6 o'clock on Monday I've been so tired that I can hardly catch myself and here you now going back to over to St. Kitts for the budget you were over there today and um, now you're now preparing yourself to go back over to present uh, tomorrow morning so it can't be an easy thing sometimes people look at politics uh, or look at running government and they think you know hey these guys are living on easy street <laughs> but it's certainly not easy i don't envy you at all um having to go over tomorrow morning well not only do i have to go over but dr terence drew back it for three hours and 20 minutes <laughs> today and so they're telling me that i have uh, the ability to bat for three hours and 20 minutes tomorrow if I so desire. I w would want to assure our brothers and sisters, aunts and kids, and certainly those ADs, that I have absolutely no intention <laughs> to go for three hours and 20 minutes. But certainly, yes, the budget debates of each year, they're happening tomorrow, uh, continuing tomorrow, and I'm sure late into the night. So we will have a lot, of, a lot to do. 
And uh, just today we were over, of course, our representatives, the Honorable Alexis Jeffers, the Honorable Eric Evelyn, myself, and then our Senator, uh, Mr. Toya Jones. And we were, well, I'm sorry, Honorable Toya Jones, forgive me. And we were over there today for purposes of of the budget. So we go back tomorrow. But my purpose tonight was really to call to say thank you. From the bottom of my heart, thank you. Thank you to the people of Nevis who at the end of the day in their wisdom have decided that the CCM is the better choice to govern the affairs of the island of Nevis. I of course, as I've done publicly, congratulate Dr. Janet Hodge on her victory. Uh, congratulate the Honorable Cleon Stimson Simmons on her victory. And of course, extend to all those who are unsuccessful, Dr. Patricia Bach, Ms. J.D. Keynes, and uh, of course, Mr. Ron Ayers, uh, my commendation for the effort that they put up. But at the end of the day, the voice of the people is the voice of God. And the people have determined that the constant citizens' movement is their choice. And the island of Neve will stay blue. And so I'm delighted that we had this campaign. It's over with. We can now settle down and get into Christmas and have a good Christmas season. So thank you very much for indulging me. I will go back to work now, but I trust and hope that all will be well with the island of Nevis, and I pledge my undying commitment to this island and to our people. I am the servant in chief, and I will continue to demonstrate that commitment to our people, for which I know our people would have voted. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank sir. you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, you are listening to On The Mark, and of course, that was the Honorable Premier himself, Dr. The Honorable Mark Brantley, um, freshly sworn in for a second term today, and, uh, you know, he calling in to give his thanks to all of those who would have gone out and, and voted, and um, more specifically, those who would have voted for the concerned citizens movement and even more specifically those who would have voted in um, St. John's which is his district where he is the representative and um, Spencer you, you started out that you were only going to be here for a few minutes but you know <laughs> how on the mark is so it looks like you're staying the whole night with well. us so <laughs> we'll might as well <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you know, um, of course, we're going to get ready to open the lines now. And when the lines are open, um, the numbers to call are 869-469-1616, 869-469-1700. Um, being here on, on the mark could be um, addictive. <laughs> you know, s sometimes we get that interaction from our people, and so we enjoy it. Do we have a first caller for the night? Um, caller, you're on the mark. Hello. Good evening, Mr. Yes, good evening. How are you? Winner, winner, winner. Thank you. We good. certainly Psalm appreciate 10, that. Sweat not thyself because of evil doers. Neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity. For they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither as the green herb. Trust in the Lord and do good. So shalt thou dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desire of thine heart. Commit thy ways unto the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. And he shall bring forth thy righteousness, the light, and the judgment as the noonday. Rest in the Lord, and wait patiently for him. Fret not thyself because of him who prospered his ways, because of the man who bringeth wicked devices to pass. Cease from anger and forsake wrath. Fret not thyself in all wise to do evil. May you all have a great evening. May, may the Lord continue to bless you. Mr. Brand and know you're going to do it. Congratulations. Thank Jack you. Mr. Sheriff, I know you're going to do it. Congra and Eric, I know. We all are winner, winner, winner. Good night. Good night, and thank you so much. You want to go ahead and respond? You have any other caller? Okay. Um, so, we have what, 10 minutes before the, the um, 9 o'clock hour. Um, also, we had the budget over on St. Kitts today. I don't propose to talk um, too much about the 
the budget. I would prefer to keep it here in Nevis and um, talk about <laughs> the <laughs> the elections. But certainly, if anybody wants to call in and um, tell me what they thought about the budget that was presented by Dr. Drew, his first budget, and uh, of course, I'd like to take the opportunity to congratulate um, Dr. Drew on his his first budget. I heard some some parts of it. I didn't catch the whole budget as um, Premier Brantley would have said. It was two hours and three hours, three hours. Three and three 20 hours. minutes. I recall when the, the speaker, the Honorable Speaker of the House said that it was three hours. Everybody in the House started to laugh. But it, it really was a long budget. We have a caller holding. Caller, you're on the mark. Good night. Try. Good night, sir. Yes, good night, sir. How you doing, man? Wonderful. Not as good as you, but wonderful. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Spencer, my brother. Good evening, my brother. Good night. How are you doing? I'm giving thanks. Oh, great. Listen, I just wanted to call in. Um, but I, first of all, I just want to um, say thanks to my supporters um, in the constituency of St. George Gingerland. I really want to say a big, big, hearty thank you to the good people of St. George Gingerland for once again reposing their trust and confidence in me in such overwhelming fashion. I'm really humbled. Um, of course, you know that the people of Gingerland would have voted for me in 2017 when I ran first for the local elections. And you have done, you have given me a, a, a clear mandate once again in 2022. Well, I had absolutely no doubt that this will happen because uh, um, I think everybody knows, it's no secret, that uh, I have a love affair with the people of Gingerland and the people of Gingerland have a love affair with me. And that love of fear is not anything that just sprung up overnight. This is, this is what has been happening for many years, long before I got involved in politics. I mean, everything that happens in Gingerland, Eric Even is a part of. And so the people of Gingerland know me, and they know me very, very well. They know they can always, always depend on me. And I believe that's why they continue to vote for me in such overwhelming fashion. And so I really want to thank the good people of St. George in the land for, for, for their great support once again. I want to assure the good people of my constituency that I will never let you down. I will always be there working on your behalf. I will always be there working hard for you. I am committed and dedicated to the task of being your representative. And I will ensure in this term that we continue to have improvement and enhancement in St. George Gingerland. I want to let you know that I will never let you down. I've never done that. And I will never let the people of St. George Gingerland down. And that goes without saying. Because that the, the good people of Gingerland could attest to the fact that whatever they ask me to do, whenever they call on me, I am always there. And of course, we know that during this election, we kept saying that we are running on our record. And I, as the other candidate, we ran on our record. I have been running, I'm running on a record that has been there long before politics. And so the people of Gingerland know me, they know my record, they know my stand, they know what I stand for. And I want to really thank them for, for once again putting me there to work on their behalf. And I just want to let them know that I will never let them down. I want to thank um, as well the, the persons in my constituency group who worked hard on polling day and prior to polling day. I want to specifically single out um, Mr. Keith Herbert and Ms. Mrs. Hope Merchant for pounding the pavement, pavement with me when I did my house-to-house -house campaigning. Um, they were the answer. I really want to single those two persons out. and say a very big thank you to them and as I said thanks to all of the members of the constituency group who worked and worked hard on polling day and prior to polling day. I want at this time as well to to congratulate um, the Premier, the Honorable Mark Brantley who was sworn in this morning as the new Premier of Nevis. I want to thank him, I want to congratulate him for winning his seat in the first instance and I want to congratulate him for once again being at the helm of government on the island of Nevis being our new premier and I know he will do an outstanding job as he would have done during the past five years of course we know we had two very difficult years and he stood tall in terms of the management of the island of Nevis so honorable premier congratulations 
and of course my brother there, um, the Honorable Spencer Brand. Um, congratulations um, on your victory. I'm very proud of you. You did say that once you you get elected first, you will earn your second term, and I think you have earned it and earned it hands down based on the work that you have done in Charlestown, and not only in Charlestown, but throughout the length and breadth of Nevis. I want to say a special good night to my other colleagues, Alexis Jeffers. I know it's a hard one for you, brother, but I am. we have all confidence that you will bounce back and you will come back. Um, keep the faith. Keep the faith. I know you would have worked exceptionally hard for the people of St. James Parish, and I know it's a very huge disappointment that you lost, and you lost by, by eight votes. So I want to tell you, just keep the faith, and we will continue to look out for you as you continue to look out for us. Um, you will be there with us on our journey in the next five years. And uh, to our brand new candidate, Latoya Jones, I want to congratulate you on the excellent showing that you had in the St. Thomas's Parish. Um, great, great showing indeed. It shows that you were there, you were working. It shows that the people appreciate you, and it showed in your numbers. It shows in your numbers. And so we are confident that the next time around, you will get elected. So keep working, keep the faith, and we are, we are, we are confident that you will be successful eventually. Um, of course, we know that um, we, we now have three. We have a reduced mandate, but we want to assure the people of Nevis that your CCM team will continue to work for you, for, on your behalf. We want, it is because of the fact that the people of Nevis know that we are by far the better team. We are by far the better party to manage the affairs of Nevis. That is why we have won the government once again. That is why we have won the government once again. And I mean, irrespective of how people feel about our premier, um, as I said, I mean, no one can say that he did not work and work well during the past five years, and especially especially during the, the pandemic. And so I want to congratulate the Concerned Citizens Movement Party. I want to congratulate. Try, I want to say a special, special congratulations and thank you to you. <laughs> you really yes. worked very, very, very hard, Try, during the campaign, cheering most of the meetings. You did an exceptional job, and I really want to salute you. For, for really working so hard during the campaign. I'm sure you must be very tired, Troy. <laughs> I'm sure you must be tired. <laughs> but trust me, you did, a, you, did, you did a great job, and we are all proud of you um, in terms of, I said, being the chairman of the party and being there to organize the meeting, to execute the meeting, to, to get the notices out and so on. And, of course, to our entire campaign team, I want to especially recognize as well um, Mikhail Manners, who did an outstanding, mm -hmm. outstanding job in, um, in terms of the PR, mm -hmm. in terms of getting the message out there. But for, for the entire team of the CCM, um, kudos to all of you for standing with us, the candidates. We are a team, and I think it showed, um, it showed in the results that we were able to win the government back. And I think this is a formidable team. It is a team that is hard to beat, a team that is difficult to beat, irrespective of the odds that were thrown against us. We prevailed. And we want to thank all the persons as well who prayed for us. Because I, as I always say, prayer works. Prayers work. And they worked again in 2022. So I want to thank all the persons who prayed tirelessly for us. Morning, noon, and night. You know? And uh, we want to let the people of Nevis know that we of the Concerned Citizens Movement, your new government, that you have invested your trust and your confidence in, we will not let you down at all. You will not be disappointed that you would have put us back in government. We will work for you and on your behalf. And I believe, Troy and Spencer, I believe that this new term will be an exciting term. I believe that this new term will be one of the most exciting for not only the CCM party, not only the CCM government, but for the people of Nevis. And uh, that is why I'm saying you will not be disappointed in voting for us to be your government. Of course, you know that um, during the campaign, we would have laid out some of our plans that we have for the next five years. We're going to hit the ground running, and it's going to be exciting times ahead. It's going to be exciting times ahead for Nevis, for divisions, for residents. And let us all, the election is over. We need to settle down now. 
We need to accept <laughs> the results. The, it's, the people of it's, believe it's, it's, have it's, spoken. It's interesting that you say that, you know, because I met somebody. I didn't hear that, Troy. I said it's interesting. It's quite interesting that you said that, that the elections are over. Yes. Because I met somebody today, and in speaking to them, I said, you know, the elections are over. And, uh, you know, I think we should all come together. And the person let me to know. Election are over. No election over. They, they had some things that happened. And election not over. We're going to go to the court. I'll speak a little bit about that, you know. Well, you um, know, Troy, it is funny you say that. And it's funny people say that. Because, you know, even during the campaign, we had a lot of rumors um, spewing here, there, and everywhere. A lot of accusations, but there has never been one shred of evidence. <laughs> Not one shred of evidence. I've heard so many persons talking about um, CCM manipulating the process and all kind of nonsense and the electoral office. We must be reminded, the people of Nevis must be reminded that the electoral office is not controlled by the Nevis Island Administration. It is a federal entity controlled by the federal government. And so the, ne the concerned citizens movement cannot but you, you and never manipulated and tried to manipulate anything that goes on. The, the thing about it is, in, in St. John's, when we got the the list, we all got the list, um, because there are some big boxes, especially yes. the box that we call three, mm -hmm. and that box was split in into A, B, C, D, E. I think E was at um, EPPS, yes. uh, D was at uh, Brown Pasture, yes. and then A, B, and C were at Marion Heights. Marian Heights. Yes. Yeah. But it is it is one box. So the way how the box was split um, in past in the past, the boxes at EPPS and and the one at Brown Pasture would be mm -hmm. split based on your surname. So mm -hmm. you would have probably from A to K yeah. vote in one place, and then from um, you know, from another thing down to Z, mm -hmm. voting somewhere else, you know, and um, in this case, that was not, you know, this year, that was not the case. Mm -hmm. So, both boxes had um, all of the the letters from A to, to Z, mm -hmm. and so in the morning, early, it was creating a problem because, mm -hmm. uh, Voters were being told. I think our polling agents were being told that this box is from A to I think it was A and B, and then we were told that the other box would be from C all the way down to Z. Mm -hmm. And but when we looked at the list, we noticed that that was not the case. Right. And so it took some time before um, persons could figure out exactly what had happened. Mm -hmm. And it was not a case of where the CCM knew how Precisely. it was it was divided up and the NRP did not know. Mm -hmm. It was a case of that um, both parties were learning at the same time. Mm -hmm. And I want people to understand how the electoral process has a lot of protections right. um, in place. In the morning, when, when the first person comes to vote, mm -hmm. the presiding officer would open the, the ballot box. Mm -hmm and and would turn it over and the ballot boxes that we're using now are right. translucent so you can see so you can kind of see through it yep. mm -hmm. and so the the officer would open the box and present the box and everybody would be able to look at it the polling a the poll watcher for for both parties would be able to look at it right the presiding officer yes. the counter yes. and then the first person who is going to vote would also look at it and they would sign to indicate that the the box was empty. Right. The box would then be locked, um, sealed, shut. The the top would be mm -hmm. placed on, and then every voter that comes in, that person's ID is inspected by the um, presiding officer, and then that ID is looked at by um, the persons who are the poll watchers right. yes. for both parties. Mm -hmm. And that is a process in every single district, and and. That's that's the process all the way through. In the same box that had the little discrepancy, that was also the process. Mm -hmm. And there was a simple discrepancy of um, the the um, officer would have written that 
a total of 300 votes were cast mm -hmm. but when they um actually counted up the votes or tallied up the votes the box did contain 315 mm -hmm. votes so um you know i think there is an explanation mm -hmm. for for uh, why that is the case mm -hmm. i don't want to come out and, and give the explanation that's not for me to, our party had nothing to do with exactly that. but right. in that polling division the nrp would have had a poll watcher the ccm would have had a poll watcher that's sitting there so the and they would have observed anything Absolutely. so if so if there was any thing that happened that poll watcher should be able to the poll watcher for the nrp should have indicated to them since early exactly. in the day and that sure there was a problem <laughs> Because, I mean, and yeah, then you so have an agent for the both parties. It's yeah. not like we had an agent in there for CCM and there was no agent for, and the, for the other side. And the, the thing about it also is custody of these boxes. There is a chain of custody that is established. Mm -hmm. Because from the time you, you see those boxes come in, in the morning you realize the box is empty and you have that those persons watching every single ballot go into that box of course. when those boxes are sealed they are sealed in the presence of the of the agents, agents for the yeah. parties and then when they are transported each party has an agent, an an agent, agent yes. that Precise. goes on the bus mm -hmm. with the boxes the i boxes. mean for for nevis too mm -hmm. um I happen to be the agent that goes on the bus. <laughs> so I have a long day on election day. My election right. day starts at 4 a.m. Mm -hmm. and it ends at um, after 7 or whenever right. we get to the counting station with all of those boxes. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, the, the we look at the each one of those boxes when they leave the, mm -hmm. the, um, the poll right. and we, f we take them to the place where they're going to be counted. And I, c and I can speak. Mm -hmm. um, for the for the NRP, the person who travelled with the box and has done it for the past few elections is um, Halstead Byron. Everybody knows him as Suti. So he was my grade six teacher. Right. You know, somebody who I have immense respect for. So he would be the person who travelled for um, the other side, and and we have a very good relationship. So we sit there and we look at everything. So there was nothing. You know, there was nothing that happened. That we stole an election. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> this is so unfounded, and as I said, you heard all these vague statements during the campaign, yeah. but you did never can point to one instance. But you, you, you know, um, Nothing it's whatsoever. It's it's kind of disappointing because Very. it's trying to to throw a cloud over, over the election. persons who who Precisely. who work yeah. in the polling stations. I, I and didn't expect persons you know, behaving to be behaving like Donald Trump. You you can be you can be um, labeling our good people who volunteer their time because we have a lot of volunteers who who work in the election you know and and i want to thank them because we would have thanked all of our party mm -hmm. people who worked on behalf of ccm but there are a lot of other people um who work on behalf of the elections Precisely. and you you know what Sorry. what made me feel good about this election i commented about it while i was on the bus going to the various um polling stations there are a lot of young young people, people, people young yes. people yeah. young people yes. who volunteer to to come out and be the mm. the tally clerks right. at these um polling right. stations right. Yes. Right. and um it it sort of warmed my heart to see uh, all of these young people who are who are out um as as the tally clerks and 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 so on and it it, it makes me feel like you know nevis is, is on a good footing Precisely. and we have such a bright future because Precisely. young people are learning about the democratic process, process yes. they are interested in the democratic mm -hmm. process mm -hmm. they are learning how all of the machinery that goes right. into election works so this bodes very well for us Absolutely. going into the future right and Troy, as you were talking about um, the, the issue with the voters' list and so on in certain areas, I mean, even here in Gingerland... I was, uh, I was about to say, I'm sure you didn't have any problems in Gingerland. It didn't look like no, you had any. Because a lot of persons up here in Gingerland, their names were moved from one polling station to the other. And, so, and some of them were not aware. And I don't know it happened, but it happened because I, rem I can give you um, several examples. I could I remember um, on, on Monday morning, I um, somebody from Ponyl called and said, "Well, come and pick your I like to go to the polls early to vote." And on my way over to pick her up, 
and two, I was going to pick up two persons, one from Ponyl, one from Clayot. And on my way over to pick them up, I, I passed this lady right there close to the market shop, and I said, well, this lady went to vote early. And I stopped to give her a lift. Um, she's from Meat Pasture. And she said, oh, Lord, thank you, the Lord sent you. I said, what happened now? She said, I see me voters live here. I normally vote at the Gingerland Secondary School because persons over on that side, Clegor, mm-hmm. Meat Pasture, and Taylor's Pasture, all those persons normally vote, most of them normally vote at the Gingerland Secondary School. And she said, I normally vote at the Gingerland Secondary School and I go over there and my name is nowhere to be found on the list. I showed them my ID. Name is no. I said, wait, darling, you just hold on. I'm going to take you back. I'm going to. I looked and her name was on the Rollins list. And so she now had to vote at the hard times building. And if I didn't see her at that time, she would have been going back home frustrated that mm-hmm. her name is not on the list. Right. But in truth and in fact, her name just had been moved to another polling station. Her address had not changed, but her name had been moved to another polling station. Well, I had all of the list with me, and I was able to tell her, listen, you see your name is right here, your name is on the list, so I'm taking you back to vote. You know, and several other persons, well, I spoke to one person, and he said to me, I had to go to four different polling stations to find my name. Because, as I said, some person's name were moved, and they were not aware, they had, their address hadn't changed, you know, and so the lady apparently was frustrated the morning that she couldn't find the name, but, and I was right there on time to take her back. I tell her, well, I know I, your name is right here, so I'm going to take you back to get to, to vote. And so if I didn't meet her, she would have gone home thinking that her name was not on the list. And so, you, and as I said, it was several persons in Gingerland whose names were shifted to other polling stations without us knowing. You now, come on, we were not interfering in the process at all, but it, I guess it happened. It, it, you know, you know so it, it was the same for both. Yeah, yeah, it was. Yeah, I, I, she had... We had one or two of those same incidences, yeah. uh, but I, 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 I think um, Eric and Joy, both of you would have given some indication as to what would have transpired in your various uh, constituencies, Gingerland and St. Paul and uh, St. John's. I, I, I think generally the the election went reasonably yeah. smoothly. Mm-hmm. Um, in St. Paul's, we just had you know a few vociferous persons who. In my mind, I um, was just trying to cause some mischief here and there, but mm-hmm. outside of that, there really wasn't any um, other undue uh, incident that we could really right. um, deem was anything too serious, you know. But I, 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 I think that um, the level of anxiety, the level of tension, I think persons may, uh, you know, get out of character. I mm-hmm. mean. I think that elections uh, certainly have um, consequences. Um, one side wins, another side loses. Right. And um, I believe that people invest a lot of time and energy and effort into these elections. And I, I, I think that oftentimes some people get out of character. And, uh, right. and um, But I think all in all, I, I, I believe that we can be proud of our process. Right. I, um, I, I, I think that the supervisor and his team and all those persons who would have worked on behalf of the, mm-hmm. the electoral office would have done a remarkable job in trying to manage I, the I process. I them as well. I, I think I, they did an amazing job. I think that we need to commend them. Yes, um, I, I join with you. I endorse that. I, I, I think that um, it was, in my mind, a high-stake election, a high-pressured election. Yes. Um, I moved around in my in my constituency, going from um, polling division to polling division. Mm-hmm. You know, you could have you could have felt the tension, yeah. uh, and I think that those persons who would have worked uh, for the election, you know, they felt the tension as well. They felt the pressure, and we must uh, commend. And them. I certainly want to thank them yeah. and, and and commend them. Um, Try is correct. There was a lot of young people who would have um, manned the process. Yes. And I think that these, this goes all well mm-hmm. for the process that we have capable and competent people right here in Nevis right. that can um, man our election and dismiss that, that foolish notion by one of the NRP candidates that we must send over people <laughs> from Sinkits. Mm-hmm. I thought that was a very disrespectful and disgraceful statement. And I, 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 I once again still hope that she would apologize because I think when I see that our young people were able to mm-hmm. to perform at that level, with that level of stress and pressure, and that level of maturity, maturity, yeah. and I think that um, the outcome of the election was um, 
what the people of, 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 of Nevis are uh, de de desired. Yeah, and uh, the other thing we have to deal with as well up in my area. I mean, for I, this is my fourth election. This is my fourth election in five years. And um, for the first time, the Rollins box was actually split in two. <laughs> and so persons were accustomed to going to one spot to vote. And so some of them were not aware, even though I would have made the announcement on a couple of my, my, my meetings when, when we were on the platform, everybody were not aware. So um, persons, we had, to, we had to be directing other persons where to go, because the last time when, when, when voting was in, tw in August in, in 2022, everybody voted at the Hard Times building at the Interpretation Center. But now the box was split in two, and so person, some persons had now to go down to the Joycelyn Library primary. And so when they came, some persons had to be directing them, well, based on your surname, you'll have to vote at the Joycelyn Library primary. I remember I was uh, down by the preschool on Monday afternoon, I see a gentleman drive up in his car, heading up to the, the, um, the, the, the Hard Times building. I head up behind him and tell him, sorry, <laughs> but you have place. to go back to the Joycelyn <laughs> Library primary, your name is down there. You know, and so we had this little issue, but in the end, it, things ironed out itself, itself. You know, once you have persons who are there on the ground, they will direct you. Well, listen, your name will be at the Joyce Library primary. I know. I, I there was young one young man. I messaged him. I said, listen, you ain't vote yet. He said, well, I don't went and I ain't seen nobody. I went by the hard time by by the corn mill. I said, well, now the voting is out of the corn mill. <laughs> so he went by the corn mill. Didn't see any activity happening there, and he went back home. I had to tell him, no, the voting is at the two stations, the, the Interpretation Center and Joyce Library Primary. You know, so, you know, it's not that anything was done to frustrate anybody intentionally, but these things happen. And once you have your people there on the ground to guide yes, people yes. and say, well, you know, to assist persons, things will work out. But, I mean, I think it is very far-fetched um, for anyone and disrespectful for anyone to even suggest that the, the um, very peaceful, um, concerned citizens movement will do anything to, to seal an election. Well, I think that uh, ridiculous. I, I, I think Eric and, and Troy that I, I believe that when the electoral official would have done their postmortem on this election, that they would realize that there are you know one or two areas that they would basically need to um, tighten up on and, and, and give greater clarity on. But I think that all in all, um, the election was conducted um, mm -hmm. to a level and to a standard that I think that we all can be proud of. Um, I think that any 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 kind of activity that has so many moving parts, you know, you you are expected to have one or two bumps during the course of the day. And I think that the electoral official can be proud that they would have conducted an election. Mm -hmm. um, without any any major any serious um, incidences, and That's I think right. that. We can basically put up our hand to the wall and say that the election in Nevis was um, free, and fear. free, free, free and, fear. And, and the will and of the free people. Of fear. And I think that at the end of it, um, the people of Nevis can be confident that the government that was elected was as a result of the will of the people. Mm -hmm. So, Yes, gentlemen, so it was good calling in and chatting with you guys. And once again, um, we want to say thanks to not only the persons of, of my constituency, but all the persons on Nevis who, you know, would have gone out and exercised their franchise. We want to thank you once again for investing in trust and your confidence in, in, in this, the big blue machine, the CCM party. And rest assured, rest assured, your CCM party, your CCM government will never let you down. We will work tirelessly for you. And as I said... You can look forward to some exciting times ahead. We will all do this together. And as all of us as divisions and residents, Nevis belongs to all of us, and it is incumbent on all of us to work together for the betterment and the movement forward and upward of this beautiful island that we call our home, Nevis. So, gentlemen, thank you very much for allowing me this time to call in. And I trust that you all will have a wonderful rest of the show. And I want to say once again, good night to the wonderful people of Nevis and all the people overseas who are listening, those who are in tune and those who are logged on. Um, we say thank you very much. God bless you. God bless the island of Nevis. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very, very much. I, try, I just want to pick up on a few things that uh, Eric could have uh, mentioned earlier. Um, that the CCM team will continue to work for, for the people of Nevis. 
um, we continue to see uh, Troy that our first um, charge really is the people of Nevis we always put the people of Nevis interests first and the next dispensation we certainly would ensure that we continue to work and work hard for the people of Nevis he also spoke about the the exciting term the, this term would be an exciting term I think when we think about what we are thinking that we want to do with the Vans W Army International mm -hmm. Airport, it must be an exciting term. term. Mm -hmm. I think that when we think about what we want to do with the the, the road from um, Long Point to uh, mm -hmm. Hanley's Road and, and the possibilities of what can happen in, the, in, in that section of the island of Nevis, my vision is that that area would be, and I keep saying it all the time, it's going to be the little um, Dubai in the Caribbean because of the possibilities and, and the way in which we are thinking about it. Um, when we think about the, the, the possibility of what geothermal and the transformation that geothermal can have on the island of Nevis, I, I, I am one who believes that if we really can harness this geothermal um, energy, and I think that we are headed in the right direction with the approval of the, the financing from the Caribbean Development Bank. And I, th and I think it's worth um, Spencer talking a little bit about because before the premier had called I was talking about the same jewelry yes. fund that came about in like 2014 that's when they came up with the idea of the jewelry fund and then the jewelry fund would have matured in 2015 but we were already on the path with the NRE I when um, when the Jewelry's Fund was just um, in its infancy when they came up with it. Um, I think they got the, the first set of monies going into the fund. I think monies would have come into the fund from IDB and the, yes. the World Bank and, and so on. And what happened is that the CDB w is the vehicle right. that has access to the funds that could be used for us in this area. But geothermal is something that has been built all around the world. And the people who are involved with this they have a lot of experience. The, the CDB has the connections to bring the experts to bear on this. And the thing about it that people must understand is that if it's not successful, it's a grant. If it's successful, then it becomes a loan. We have a, a caller. Let's a low interest loan. Let's go back to the lines. Oh, we've lost that caller. Callers, please be patient with us. The lines are open. We will give you some run. Let's go back to the line. We have a caller. Caller, you're on the mark. Good night. Hey, good night, the Honorable um, Trilai Bird, and good night to the re-elected, the Honorable um, Spencer Brand. Good evening. Sir. Good evening. I want to commend uh, both, both you gentlemen, but in particular, I want to commend um, Mr. Brand for a nail-biting finish <laughs> in, in consequence, uh, number one. Um, as you said, he would, he, his new name would be the, the, man, the man for the margin. Yes, <laughs> as I want to commend him for having, having, having um, received the full support of the people of Bank 20 number one, which shows that the people have their full love and respect for Mr. Brand. I also want to commend uh, Mr. Evelyn, who just would have been speaking for a while early on. Um, in addition to that, I must extend my hearty congratulations to the Premier of Nevis who is again re-elected as Premier of Nevis, which shows the commitment of the people of Nevis to, to the CCM. I want to commend those who participated in the elections in, in Nevis, those who came out to vote, those who, who played their democratic role, because it's very important that, that when elections are called, people participate. But if you would allow me, Brother Troy, I want to point out something sure. that I think um, many of the detractors and um, persons that naysayers have not realized that CCM has once again defied the odds in the Eastern Caribbean. Because if you look at <laughs> elections that have been held over the last two years, all incumbent parties have lost those elections, with the exception of my model in Barbados. The CCM has been able to regain government in a time when all other parties around that have been contested elections have lost. And so that shows the fact that the people of Nevis still have the full confidence in the CCM. And so that's an important point to know. It's also an important point to note as well 
that the there is some growing trend um uh, as we saw what happened with the numbers for um minister Brand and also for what happened with Latoya Jones that there seems to be some new conversion to CCM in in the parishes of St. Paul's and St. Thomas's. Um, in St. James, even though the numbers dwindled, one can look at it and see that in fact the NRP has peaked and one would never expect the NRP to be able to pass that number when another election is called. So, the, you know, the election are uh, um, signs to, tell, to, to look at and you can use those, those data for historical analysis. So I really want to, want to quickly um, just tell the people of Navy, thank you for choosing the right team. Um, there was never a doubt in my mind that the people of Navy would stick with the CPM. Because when you do come up from St. to look at what is happening in Navy, I'm just in awe. I got a chance to come over to Nevis and look on the island and when you hear people say nothing is happening in Nevis, you really have to wonder if they really live in Nevis <laughs> or if this is the same Nevis they are talking about. Mm. Um, when I looked at some of those houses that you would have done, Minister Brand, in your constituency up in Craddock Road, right? Those houses were, were really just simple and amazing. These are not the houses that we are seeing in St. Kitts. Uh, and not the quality, and not the quality is just way different. And so I must really commend the system um, administration. And you have five years ahead of you, as they say, all politics is local. So That's it's right. It's important to stay on the ground with the people. That's right. And um, once you're with the people, the people will be with you. So once again, commendation to you, and all the best, brother. Thank you very much, and I certainly appreciate your your, your kind uh, sentiments. I, I I totally agree with what you have said, and I think that it shows that uh, the people would have gone to the polls on the 12th of December, and they would have made a choice that, in, in our mind, that the mm -hmm. Council of Citizens Movement Party is definitely the better party to administer the affairs of the island of Nevis. And I certainly want to thank you for those kind words. Definitely. All the best to you as well. Thank you. Thank you very much for your call, sir. Yes, for the try. All the best. Okay, so we, we would stick with the lines if we have anybody on the line. Lines are open 869 469 1616 and 1700. Spencer, you think? Yeah, Troy, I also want to um, endorse something that um, Eric and uh, the Premier would have said earlier in terms of uh, the level of uh, involvement that both you, yourself, um, and the as the chairman of the Council of Citizens Movement Party, I believe that you 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 would have became the chairman of uh, CCM just recently, recent enough. Mm -hmm. And even though that you would have been around for for some time as a member of the executive, you would have taken over the chairmanship. And I thought that the way in which you have really managed this election, because really you were the one who. <laughs> Um, was one of the managers, so to speak, of this election. I certainly want to thank you for the, the the level of professionalism, the way in which this election was conducted, the the, the campaign was conducted. Certainly want to tip my hat to you. I also mention um, young Mikael Manners, mm -hmm. and I thought that he did a, a phenomenal job. Excellent. In, job. in terms of getting out the information. Um, I remember one day I, I had to call him and tell him, boy, slow down a little bit, take it easy, you're going to overload yourself. Um, because I think that he was really, really pushing it, and I really want to um, congratulate him. Um, I thought that he did a phenomenal job in terms of keeping the Concerned Citizens Movement Party's message mm -hmm. front and center. Keeping everybody informed. Uh, informed and um, sending out information. Um, I thought that he did a phenomenal job. Um, he himself would have taken up that position just recently. And I thought that his performance was certainly one that um, any PRO um, coming behind can have a template to work from. So I really want to congratulate him. And of course, um, we have also seen a number of our uh, young persons from the youth arm would have also assisted. Mm -hmm. And I want to congratulate them as well. Other members of the executive, I thought that it was a, a, a an all-inclusive approach, a team effort. 
And I think that, like I said, while we as candidates are the faces at the end of the line, there, there certainly is a, is, is, is a very um, vibrant team behind us. And I certainly want to congratulate all of you. But I thought that I would join with the Premier and Eric to highlight both you and uh, Mikael Manners because I think that both of you would have done a phenomenal job in ensuring that we are where we are. Um, post this um, election on um, December 12th. Troy, I think my voice is kind of <laughs> leaving me, but I try to stick it out. And yeah, you're, you're, here for, you're here for an hour and a half already. It's only, it's only <laughs> half an hour. Uh, yes, I try to you stick know, it out. You know, um, campaigns, of course, uh, are changing. They're a little bit different from yes. years ago. I remember my first experiences around um, political campaign as a, as a young boy coming to... Um, election campaigns and the the only way you would have been able to hear um what the politicians have to say is to go out to the meetings, to the meetings right. and you know in those days um everybody would be out to listen to the meeting because you want to hear what the politicians have to say the politicians come out on the afternoon and they set up their bullhorn and so on and then they they would have that meeting in those days politicians used to have an early meeting Mm -hmm. and then they would have a meeting later on and the, the, meeting, yeah. on the evening but nowadays things have changed where uh, with the proliferation of the internet and technology and so on a lot of people choose to consume their meeting from home and of course we have Von Radio uh, Absolutely. and the, the CCM we tend to sometimes employ Von Radio to carry our meetings because we know when it comes to Nevis that uh, Vaughn Radio has that listenership and and so on, the Eastern Caribbean powerhouse. So, of course, we want to give that kudos to Vaughn Radio. And um, so a lot of people choose to, 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 you know, view the meeting or to listen to the meeting via the radio or via Facebook and YouTube. And the guys who, who do the, um, the live streaming, they do such a remarkable yes. job that people feel like they're at yes. the event they, they're home on their tablet or their phone and whatever and they feel like they're at the meeting because they're seeing everything that's happening and everything is in in real time so a lot a lot of things have changed about um, political campaigns people also consume a lot of of um, media on their phone like you put out short messages on your on your phone and so on so so but the politics itself in Nevis is evolving it's changing a lot of course some people still require that personal touch where you go out and you you visit um, people and so on and we of course try to keep our visits up all year round um, year in year out we we are part of the community and you know um, I, I certainly am involved with a lot of groups and so on and s sometimes you don't get a lot of, you don't have a lot of time for yourself um, domino tournaments and pool tournaments and um, events at church you know there are a lot of different community things community things that are happening um, uh, assisting young people with afternoon classes and so on uh, we sometimes these are the little things that keep you in touch with the community and these things go along a long way so sometimes um people look at politics and they say well, it's not hard work but <laughs> a lot of hard work goes into to politics and then of course you know um the phones never stop ringing that's right and then when it gets closer to elections it's it's even more so the phone rings continuously all day and it rings up to midnight and and if you're not careful it rings beyond midnight so um uh, the the job of a politician or minister <laughs> is certainly not not an easy thing and but we do it for the for the good of the of the country and and as you said um when you spoke earlier that uh whenever you decide to hang up your boots you want nevis to be much better off than than you met it well absolutely i think that is the ultimate goal you know i i think that we we, we came we saw we did the best that we could um 
sometimes you know we are dealt certain cards covid was one of them that we really didn't have a, a blueprint or a manual for and we tried to do the best that we could we are now basically coming out on the other side of it and i think that as um, minister Evelyn would have said i think that the next um, term would be a very exciting um, term joy i want to pivot a bit as we spoke mm -hmm. a little bit about the campaign and along this journey we would have had um some djs some sound people and so on and i hope i don't get in trouble here tonight i hope i don't miss anyone but i really want to commend someone like zimba who mm -hmm. would have been a part of this journey and uh, mikey and um, dj smudge i thought that they were again another set of the arm that tried to make our political meetings make this journey what it has been i believe that they themselves would have been they are tired i know that they, they i know that they are tired because um i saw mikey um yesterday i think when we had the the, the motorcade and he looked tired <laughs> you see, you see some people going out to enjoy themselves at Mother Cable. Yeah, like he has to be yeah. the uh, prepping uh, yeah. and so on. I really want to thank them. I think that they have done a phenomenal job. Um, they, 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 they keep us, you know, sounding good. And mm -hmm. I, I really want to thank them for the kind of heavy lifting that they themselves would have done throughout this process as well. Um, they make our jobs a lot easier when we get up on the mic. We got to thank the guys yeah. who, who moved the stage. Who moved the stage and all of that. Those type, uh, of, things those type of things. And the setup. Um, yeah, the tents, so the tent has to go there. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot that goes It's, it's a lot, you know, and I, I really want to thank um, the entire team, whatever role you, you may have played, you know. Um, we are just thankful we are just happy that we have people who um, make that commitment give that commitment to not necessarily just the party but to the island of nevis and we are definitely grateful for the assistance mm -hmm. um ladies and gentlemen we are at just about 20 minutes to 10 o'clock hour of course we've opened the lines and numbers to call 869 Four six nine one six one six eight six nine four six nine one seven zero zero. We go back to the lines. Caller, you are on Good the market Good evening. Good evening. How Good are evening. You? Good evening, Mr. Lieberd and Brand. Good evening. This is Jennifer Freeman from the Nevis Blind Light and Visually Impaired Society. Mm -hmm. I would like to thank the public for supporting us with our lunch mm -hmm. and our helpers and everybody who donated whatever they did. I would like to also inform the public, persons in the public who usually get an envelope from the society. They will be distributed from Friday this week. Um, some persons who usually get from members of the society will keep that same way. Or whoever does help us distribute. Those who go to the bank, please go to the bank and collect. But it will be the Nevis Cooperative Credit Union, as usual. I haven't told Miss Carver anything yet, but she's <laughs> a point person there. And so I'm very thankful that they can have it before their Christmas. Okay? And all the best and thanks. Thank, Thank you, you very much. much. Have yourself bye bye. a wonderful Christmas. Okay, you too. Thank you. Let's stick with the lines. We have another caller. Caller, you're on the mark tonight. Yes, caller, you're on the mark. Good night. Good night. Okay. <laughs> How are you doing, brother? What, what are you saying? People have said, people have now. People have said, you have said, not finish it. Mm hmm. Why are they saying that? I mean, you don't finish it. What am I saying? So, every, they say, they must say that, that, that man cheat. Cheat. Oh, back with you. You're asking a good question. Well, uh, anyway, the people that Okay, we seem to have lost that. that um, no. Oh, you're still back. Here, still here. All right, all right. All right, Darbal, you have a good night. <laughs> but you know, Joy, um, I think that the Premier alluded to exactly what is happening now throughout the campaign that the other side would be giving all kind of excuse as to why they would have lost the election um he 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 gave the analysis of uh, or the comparison
to Hussein Bolt if but, he was but, running against Hussein. You, you, you know what I find? Uh, I mean, not just, not yeah. What I find real amazing is no Mark won by one forty seven, right? No, why would why would he cheat to win by one forty seven? We have. We have a hard working minister, deputy leader, who lost by eight. Mm -hmm. And and they're not saying anything and, about that. And nobody is saying no, anything no. about that. And <laughs> we and um we did not try to do anything to manipulate so he doesn't lose by eight. No. So so then then why would we try to do anything else? You, you see the thing about elections and it the CCM uh, you know, we can speak boldly about this the ccm respects the will of the electorate every time all the once time. once the elections are called and the the everything is put in the hands of the people when the people go out and vote we respect how the people vote let's go back to the lines we have a caller we've lost the caller okay callers please be patient with us we value your calls let's go back to the line caller you're on the mark good night Yes, good night. I'm just calling in to congratulations to you all that winning the seat right through. I call you from overseas. We appreciate it. Thank you, Thank you very much. much. And I wish you all many more. If my brother was alive, if I voted for you all because he was a CCM fan. But I voted for my cousin Malcolm Gishar. Mm -hmm. And he was a great pleasure when he said, Look out for Navy and his people. And you all doing that. And I know you're happy. And also my family in them grave. And I just want to say thanks to all of you are doing for Nevis and his people. And can you be, um, I just want to say good job, you know, and continue keep up the good work in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank God you very good much. All the time. He's Thank a you. loving, caring father. He know the good, he know the bad. Hang on in there in Jesus' name and continue. Thank you. Thank you very much, Carla. And I I did neglect to send out happy birthday or happy belated birthday to Kelsia Liebird. I was told that your birthday was yesterday. I hope you had a wonderful time and may God continue to um, bless you. You know, you know, Spencer. In speaking about sticking on the same topic of, uh, you know, the election and the results and so on. If if there is, because the law provides for a challenge, if there is some legitimate reason for a challenge, and so I am certainly not one who is against a challenge once there is some sort of legit reason. And in this case, we have a caller. Okay, let's go back to the, the lines. Oh, we've missed that caller. I'm going to have to be a bit quicker <laughs> because our callers, you know, they're not hanging out on the line at all. Callers, um, if you're calling in, please be patient with us. Um, we'll try to get to the line as much as possible. We are 15 minutes before the 10 o'clock hour, and we will take as many calls as, as we can take. Caller, you're on the mark. Good night. Caller, you're on the mark. Good night. Good evening, gentlemen. Yes. Good evening. Yes. yes. Uh, good evening, guys. Carl Brown from Fountain and St. Kate. How are you doing, sir? Oh, I'm not doing too bad for my age. <laughs> I must say hi, congratulations to the CCM team. And I must say congratulations to the leader of the NRP. She fought hard and got a narrow victory. But I say, my boy, you have five years to pull back the mere eight votes. Mm -hmm. And I would say you have run a good campaign, but you were edged out and you lost by eight. Uh, um, what I would like to say, though, I each... NRP has gained tremendous ground, and you guys have to watch that um, very long and hard, and you guys have to do significant work and to come back stronger and bigger the next election around and pull back those very large votes that NRP would have gained in this election. 
what also the other thing I would like to say is that I hope that election just gone would be the last time that the Honorable Mark Grantley is walking around with the election date in his back pocket. <laughs> I, we would like to see in this term, gentlemen, that we would have a set election date in this term, and that will be the last time that just the Honorable Mark Grantley knows the date of the election. All of us need to know that date. So we're looking forward for you guys within your first 200 days, now you're back in government to set an election date. I must say um, a, a very hearty, um, good try from the Honorable, the, sorry, the lady, Miss Jones. She ran a good campaign and she fought hard and you all could see that you're gaining tremendous ground in that seat. She have done very well and I think the best in a long time in that seat as a CCM candidate. That was the best performance ever. For CCM yeah, candidate. and it was a very, 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 very good and strong performance. And if she continue to work and continue to do the things that she always been doing, I think the next time around, she will take that seat. Carla, let me ask you a question, not, yeah. not, not to interrupt you. Um, what's your take? We, we have had the federal election in August, and now we are having the Navy Southern Administration election here in December. Just a mere few months apart. What's your take on the next time around, the next five years, that we can have both the federal election and the Navy Southern Administration election at the same time? No. No. Why no. not? Mere confusion. Why? Because it means that whoever win the government in St. Kitts, nice, whoever win the government in St. Kitts, the CCM members, will have to be a part of that government. Not necessarily. Yeah, if you're having one election, why are you going to have one election to form the local government in Nevis? They are taking part in a federal election and they are not going to be a part of, of the federal government. They are going to be opposition in in the federal parliament. No, no, no. That, that, w w no, what I'm trying to get at, Carla, is you, you, you indicated earlier when you started that you would hope that the Premier would not have the date of the election walking around in his, in his back pocket. I believe that that's what you said. Yes. But my, 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 my question is, um, what's your take on I think you meant that we need to have a fixed date for the election, correct? Yes. So why and can't we have why can't for that here in St. Kitts in the federal election? So why can't we have a fixed date for both elections in St. Kitts and Nevis on the same day? No, 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 no. <laughs> no. <laughs> it, it will bring me a confusion. It is good how, how it is going. Right? But 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 you see but, but Carla, you see he, he here is where again leaders, uh, hear me, if both leaders don't set our election date, we will ha we we will have a um, snap election like what happened in Dominica because if the government feels they are very strong in a year time and we don't have fixed election date, that government have the right to call a snap election, catch the opposition with the pants down. Look what happened in Dominica. Yes. The, the, the opposition leader and, and the, the candidate for that seat resigned. And nobody can blame Roosevelt Terry to see the opposition was in mere confusion and weak at that time. So he called a snap election and gone in with, with a, large, a larger majority. And that is why we need fixed election dates in the federal election and the local election. So nobody could call no snap election. You have to work out your time. When the time is come, everybody knows that time. I, I hear you, but the point that I was trying to get at, you see that Nevis continue to have these two elections every five years. And um, it, it, I, I have always believed that because of the frequency of elections and Nevis, 
we continue to see this great, you know, this kind of great divide and this great bitterness. And I don't think that the island of Nevis have really had a chance to heal from one election to the next. And to Zimbabwe, we do the same thing. Well, it, it, other countries, other countries in the Caribbean do the, do the same thing. They have the same thing. They, they, they have the smaller country, smaller country have the election, they have the parliament, and they have the federal. Yeah, but 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 Carla, what I, what I'm what I'm trying to say to you is that um, we now we now have a very unique situation here where we would have had a a an el a federal election which was three years ahead of schedule. So it now means that both the federal election and the Nevis Island administration election is is basically three or four months now apart. And I am now seeing that in the next five years. We could have a similar situation where we could have a federal election maybe in July and then we have a Nevis Island administration election maybe in October. Um, no, it won't happen that way if we have a set election date on both islands. You think so? That happened, yes. That <laughs> happened because the fallout of unity and the, 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 the former prime minister did not want to be to go to um, the, the thing where that the opposition had more seat on him and the, the, the votes against him. He didn't want to take the chance so he called a snap election. That is why we need fixed election day. Because that won't happen. And the Koreans can have election in their time. Okay, I hear you. So guys, I would be looking forward for you guys to be pushing for fixed election day in Nevis in the local election and fix election date in the federal election because you guys are federal um, candidates so I'll be looking, we will be looking, not me, we will be looking for you guys to be pushing for fix election date in both elections so we won't have that happen again I hear you right, so, and also we are looking forward for you guys to um, push and be a part of co um, constitutional changes and electoral changes too because we all know this, this have a lot of problems and we'll be every candidate all the voters been saying it for years and no government is taking up the challenge of fixing these things they go into the election and then when they lose, they call fraud or oh, oh, the toll office was based on the toll office. Let me fix it. Come on, man. Take some time out, spend some money, put some effort into it and fix these things that everybody sees have a lot of problems. Let us eliminate as much as possible of these problems. We know they're going to always acquire of cheat and, and it can't be cheap because everybody have have a candidate, have, sorry, have a representative that, that role with these things. But when you have four loaders, that is what you, 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 you hear the cry out of cheat. It can't, and the nice can't cheat. And then they have supporters supporting this nonsense when they know better. Because there are a lot of us that follow, that follow the boxes that carry the vote. Uh -huh. You drive, no you drive behind the boxes too. But when you are so a loser, you cry that and then you have your supporters believe in that. Yeah. I'm okay. gone, guys. Okay, okay. Carla, Carla, we, we, we thank you for your, 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 your contribution. And um, you spoke about constitutional reform and electoral reform. And I think that there need to be, I agree with you, that there need to be some, some um, seriousness with those issues. I also would throw into that... Um, equitable sharing of our revenue um, you know that that was a major issue in the in the in the uh, in the recent federal election and we are hoping that that matter also can be resolved and i think that if we are to um, look across the table from each other with mutual respect and and work towards these things i am absolutely certain that we can get them remedied so caller i i agree with you that we have some challenges we have some issues and i think that if we really put our minds to it and the commitment to it we certainly will get them accomplished for the betterment of St. Kitts and Nevis. We have any other caller? Ladies and gentlemen, you're listening to On The Mark. We have five minutes to go. We could probably take two calls. 
if you could make them um, snappy. But, you know, um, Spencer, at the end of the day, the elections are over. We, the CCM, we have won three of five seats and uh, that's a mandate when we when we first got back into government in 2013 we we worked with three out yeah. of five seats um and we were successful we are back to three very successful out of five seats and so we would do what is necessary to work on behalf of the people of nevis as we said um government takes a, a, a lot to run. Okay, we have a caller. Let's go back to the line. Caller, you're on the mark. Good night. Hello, good night. Good night. Good night. This is Jennifer Ferrican, and I call to wish all the CCA ministers all the best. We put them there, and we're going to keep them there. Good night. <laughs> Thank you very <laughs> Thank much. Thank you very much. <laughs> you know, I like that. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. And, um, you know, a lot, a lot happened in this election and and we'll get a chance to to talk about it you know i mean a couple of days before the election persons started sending me this this video that um went out on freedom fm um, i haven't looked at it up to up to this day <laughs> i've heard people tell me about it but um We'll get some time to adjust that. Maybe we'll need a whole show for that too. <laughs> but um, sometime in the in the future, uh, we'll have an opportunity. But I think it's important that we let people know that um, we are a committed um, government. We are committed to serving the people. I don't think there's there's any government anywhere that is at, as accessible as um this ccm government of course even to come here to on the mark on a weekly basis it's either the premier himself who's here hosting and it's a call-in show um myself um spencer you have been here from time to time eric has hosted the show um alexis has hosted the show from time to time and so we are always accessible to the general public and we don't run away from the questions it whether the questions are tough questions or uh, whatever they are we are always open and accessible because what we do is about service to our people spencer we have just about uh, two minutes left so i'll let you um have the the last word to wrap up well thank you troy i i want to thank you for the invitation again i we initially intended for me to be here for about 15 20 minutes <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> Um, spend the two hours. Uh, yeah, it was definitely good. Two, two hours, two hours, two hours have um, gone by quickly. I think my voice um, allowed me to stay that that time. I really want to thank the people of Nevis once again for uh, giving this Concern Citizen Movement Party a renewed mandate, albeit um, with a with a, uh, a reduced um, number. And I particularly want to thank the people of St. Paul's for uh, allowing me to continue to serve them. Um, I believe that, as Minister Evelyn would have said earlier, I am looking forward for a very exciting term. Um, we have some very exciting um, ideas, and we were bold enough to put them in our manifesto, so it shows the commitment that we have to the people of Nevis in terms of moving this country forward. And we are hoping that we will be able to accomplish all of what we uh, set out in our manifesto with the love and the cooperation and the praise of the people of Nevis. So I want to thank you. Thank you, St. Paul's. Thank you, Nevis. And may God continue to bless this beautiful and peaceful island of ours. The band has struck up, so that's our cue. It's time to go. Of course, this show is going to be rebroadcast tomorrow. At one, if you missed it tonight, you can catch us on the replay. Thank you very much for tuning in. Thank you very much for your call. Have a wonderful night. With all the power of the views and opinions expressed on the preceding program were solely those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect the views of the Nevis Broadcasting Company Limited or its advertisers.